Hi, I'm Richard with Sewing Machine Tips and Tricks, and today I have a Janome 6500 quilter. Uh, just recently got brought in to me. Um, she said that the presser foot lifter hasn't worked right since the last time that she had it serviced. That was at another shop somewhere. Um, I think like close to a year now it's been. Um, it's skipping stitches. The reverse isn't working right. It's just balling up underneath. Um, as well, the stitch length isn't consistent. It uh, The stitch length varies on that. Um, and as well, she wants a full service done on it. So today we're going to see what's going on with this machine. Um, get it fixed, get it serviced, and get it out. So let's get it. Okay, so... I want to see firsthand just exactly what this machine is doing. So I've got a piece of denim, I've got it threaded, got everything ready to go. And uh, we're going to see just exactly what it is this machine is doing. So I'm going to, we're just going to go slow right this minute. And uh, here we go. Okay. Seems to be making a stitch okay. Let's speed it up. We're going to reverse. I don't know, it seems to be working in reverse fine. Hmm. Well, presser foot definitely won't stay up. <coughs> Let's uh, take a gander. Man, I don't know. She showed me uh, some material that she'd been sewing on, and it was definitely skipping stitches. But, uh, this looks pretty good. The stitch length is a little bit wonky. Looks like it's a little shorter here than it is here. Let's, uh, check and see what, uh, how much pressure we've got on this. Well, it was all the way, so... She had a ton of pressure on it. So we're going to open it up and check it. The, <clears throat> it's not real, real bad. But you can see the length here. I don't know if you, how well you can see that. As opposed to, say, the length right here. This seems a little bit longer than this here. So let's see, let's uh, put this up and I'm gonna unthread my needle. Feed dogs are coming up good. What kind of pressure? Uh, it's a fair amount of pressure on it. Um, makes me wonder if she's, uh, Makes me wonder if she's pulling on her on her material, if she's uh, pull if she's pulling her fabric or not. I'll have to talk to her when I see her. Um, it didn't skip any stitches. It uh, didn't do anything crazy in reverse. It all looked pretty good. I'll have to talk to her. So we'll see. Anyway, we're going to get into this and open it up and. Uh, I guess first thing I'm going to do is open this end and look at it and see what that looks like. Okay, so I've got the end off of it and you can see just doing this it won't stay. Now if I'm real careful with it and I hold it there a second it'll stay, but it don't take much for it to drop. So I was looking at it and uh, the way this works is this take up this this uh, lift lever has a flat on it and then it comes to it 
the flat comes to a corner and it turns real sharp. So when this lifts, that's sitting on top of that flat and it should stay like that until you pull it down. But the where the corner is has gotten worn down. And so it's real, instead of having a sharper corner, it's just like real smooth. So, and most of the weight sits down on that corner. So it's just pushing it down uh, with nothing to really hold it. So I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna sand it down a little bit and I'm gonna see about putting maybe a little bit of hot glue on it and letting that sit and try to even it out and make more of a, uh, of a good edge for it and see if that's gonna work. I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not, but we're gonna try it. If it doesn't, then we will go with another plan. Here we go. Okay, so there's two screws on top and then there's gonna be a wire connected to my, uh, to my uh, bobbin winder. I've taken the two screws out. I'm just gonna grab the handle, I'm gonna gently lift and it should come undone. And pull this wire out. You can see the wire right there. I'm going to unhook it. Don't let this fall. Okay, so I've unhooked that and now we're out, that's out of the way. All right. And I have got to get in here. There's a there's a little screw in here that unscrews, but I've got to get to it. And this this uh, this piece here is in my way. So let's see what we got to do to uh, get it. Okay, so it looks like I've got a spring right here. I've got to undo, and then a screw here and a screw here. And it looks like once I do that, that this will just come undone or come out of there and get out of my way. So I'm gonna be careful not to lose this spring. I'm just gonna take it completely out so I don't lose it. I don't wanna tear it up neither. And then I'll take these two screws out of here We're gonna see what that does. <coughs> I'm not sure how much that's gonna help me. There it is, it's out of the way. Now I don't think I need to undo the wiring. It wouldn't be a problem if I did, I just unhook it from top, but I think we're okay. Now we're gonna undo this little screw right here. This is the one that's holding the my take up lever in there. Got this thing Shouldn't be much pressure on it. There we go. <laughs> and there it is. It came out relatively painlessly. And you can see right here, you can see the wear and tear and you can see that this is like really, really rounded. Rounded way off. It's not, it's not a good corner anymore. Um, the way this is made, it's not a real good corner to begin with, but there was a corner on there and now it's just rounded off. So what causes this? She had she had uh, the tension down just as far as it would go. So there's always a ton of tension on this and without it being properly lubricated and getting uh, having a bunch of lint in here with that weight sitting on it, turn back and forth, that's gonna just eat that away. And you, I mean, look at my finger. Look, look at my finger, look at all the stuff coming off of it right now. So I'm gonna clean this up, sand it down a little bit, put a little bit of, a uh, little bit of hot glue on there, okay? And I'm not gonna sand it, I'm gonna use like a 800 or maybe even a thousand grit sandpaper. I don't want to take a ton of this off. I just want it cleaned up. I want the oil off of it so that I've got a good surface and I want it fairly smooth. So I'll go here and here both and we'll see how that works out. All right, so I uh, put some, I cleaned this up with some denatured alcohol and then I've sanded it down. And actually just doing that has made a pretty good edge on it. Um, but I, I didn't 
sand it down a whole lot, but it still, it still uh, took it down a little bit. And being that this is a quilter, um, it's going to have thicker materials going under it. And I don't want to lose even a millimeter of height on this, this on her, on her uh, uh, lifter on her foot. So um, on further examination and thought, I realized that hot glue will probably, with that kind of pressure, it's, it's, it's soft, it will probably end up getting ripped off. So instead of using hot glue, I'm gonna put some JB Weld on it because I wanna build this up just a little bit and then make sure this has got a good edge on it so that it'll sit on there properly. And then I'll bring it over here uh, down the side a little bit to give it some more support so that that edge isn't just sitting there waiting to break. Um, so I'm going to do that. It'll take a little bit longer for this to uh, dry uh, because of that, but um, I think it's well worth it. Uh, my other option is to buy a new one, but she's needing it pretty quick. She's kind of in a rush. And it'll take me at least seven days to get a new one, at least. So I'm going to do that, and we'll see where it gets us. All right, so I got uh, I got some JB Weld put on it. And I kind of made it thicker than what it needed to be so that I can uh, do some sanding on it, sand it down, make sure that I get a good corner right here where I want it so that it'll set right. I just gotta let it dry up. And uh, I'll sand, like I say, I'll sand it down and clean it up and make it look good. It's probably gonna take a good 24 hours for it to dry though first. So uh, we'll get back to this in a little bit. In the meantime, we'll continue on this. All right, so while that lever is uh, drying and stuff, I have put this back together with just one screw because I don't want it hanging. Um, and we're going to take the needle plate off and check the, check the needle plate, check the bobbin case. And I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to take the, take the uh, bottom of the machine off. So here we go. Okay. So I've got the bobbin case right here and it looks really good overall. I don't really see any damage to it. I see some kind of scuff marks. I don't know if, I, if you'll be able to see it. See some kind of scuff marks right here. That could be from the thread. Could be from a broken needle. I don't know. If I run my fingernail over it, I can kind of feel them. Believe it or not, that's just enough to cause you problems. It's, it's enough to... Uh, um, it's enough to cause your thread to loop underneath for sure. Um, it can also cause several other problems. Anyway, I'm going to use some 800 grit sandpaper and I'm going to clean that up real good. Uh, the rest of it looks really good. It's a little dirty, but uh, I don't see any problems with it whatsoever. So um, now, with the needle plate, you can see some damage here let me see how close i can get you in there okay if i look inside the groove because that's that is a big one inside the groove um i've looked in there and i don't really see any damage it looks like that there has been some damage but it's been cleaned up and as well on the other side okay so they've cleaned that up um what they haven't done is they haven't cleaned this up okay there's a little bit here there's a lot right back here i can feel it running my hand over it so this can uh this can grab your fabric and either rip it or stop it from moving because the fabric doesn't lift up off this it slides over it so if it's rough or got stuff on there it can cause you problems so i'm going to clean this up this also tells me because there's quite a bit of damage to to that right there in fact that's a pretty good little shot right there it tells me that either a they are using the wrong size needle i checked the needle it's a size 14 which isn't bad 
uh, for a quilter, but it depends on what she's quilting and how thick it is and how fast she's running the machine. Um, so either she's using the wrong size needle for what she's doing or she's pulling the fabric. So if she's pulling it forward, most of the problems would be forward. And that's been repaired a couple of times as I can see. So who knows how much was there. Um, back here hadn't been recently repaired. Um, so I'm not sure. It may, it may just be that she's using the wrong size needle. Um, unless, unless she does more pulling backwards than she does forward. Now I'm not sure. Um, but I'll talk to her and find out. But definitely the damage on the needle plate says, tells me that she's not operating the machine correctly or don't have the right needle in it. So I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to talk to her and let her know. Uh, because when I done that, when I done, when I sewed the, denim it done fine um so but quilting you know that fabric is softer so it can get caught a lot easier than denim can <clears throat> um, but i'm going to clean this up and uh we're going to get into the we're going to get into the uh bottom of the machine and see how that looks <laughs> okay i pulled the end and the side off so there's the side and here's the end. Uh, I pulled the end off because I wanted to inspect the belts and inspect everything here and make sure everything looks good because I'm doing a full service and I inspect my m machines. Um, this is a good thing to get in the habit of, you know, every few months or whatever. Just oh, take it's just uh, there's three screws here and there's three screws here. You take them out and this just comes off. It's it's nothing. It's not hard or anything else. You've got a total of six screws that you take out and put back in. Um, I remove this because I have to lay it over on its back and I don't want to break these spool pins as well. I'm, there's two screws here. I'm going to remove this because I, this is where the little chart goes. I don't want uh, the weight of the machine laying on this and breaking it. So I'm going to remove those two screws and I'm going to take this off there so that there's nothing when I lay it on its back, there's nothing to break. So, but the belts look good. They look in really good condition. I don't see any problems here. I'm looking at my connections inside here. I know you can't see them. Uh, if you pull it off, you can. Um, making sure everything looks good. I'm making, looking, checking my screws, make sure they're tight. Make sure that nothing's loose. Uh, I'm gonna check my, this roller here. This is a, a tensioner roller. Make sure that it's holding good tension on my timing belt. Yeah, so this is my timing belt and this is my motor belt. Um, I'm gonna inspect the wires that I see, make sure I don't see anything wrong. I'm inspecting everything, making sure I don't see anything wrong with it. And I see nothing, it, overall it looks good. So now I'm gonna pull this off, I'll lay it over and I'll pull the, pull the, uh, the bottom off. Okay, so I have a total of five screws. I have one in each foot and then I have one in the center. I've already unloosened them, so I'm just going to take them out. Um, be careful not to lose any of these. Make sure that you know which screws go in the foot because they will come out. All right. So make sure you take note of that. Okay. Take all those out. And we're just going to take this off. I always remove covers slowly just in case there's something that I don't see. We've got a little bit of lint and stuff in here but it's not a huge buildup a little bit of oil and stuff from uh from when it's been oiled and stuff it's not huge all this will be clean i will clean the oil i'll clean everything out of this so now what do i see let me raise this up a little bit bring the camera in some okay so I'm looking here to see if I see any problems. First of all, I don't see anything that looks broke or anything. Everything looks pretty good. I'm just doing a quick cursory view. I'm checking to see how much lint I see in these areas. I don't see a whole lot. I see some. Yeah, I hear something popping. Oh, that would be that foot. Never mind. <laughs> We're good. Um, 
So I'm looking here and here because both of those have to do with your feed dogs, uh, lifting and moving your feed dogs, as well as this. Um, so I'm looking to see what kind of wear there is, see if I see anything weird. Okay, this plastic piece right here, this is what actually makes your feed dogs go up and down. It's, uh, it's kind of oval. Uh, you can see right here how it sticks up. Okay, so this pushes on one side and then this here pushes on the other. Um, it is worn. I don't know how well you can see it through the camera. Um, it is, it has been worn a good bit by the fibers of the lint and stuff, you know, all that kind of stuff. It will eat this plastic and that's exactly what it's done. It hadn't, it hadn't just destroyed it, but it slowly eats it and it wears it down. This is one reason, especially on new machines or newer, made in the last 20 years, why you want to really keep your machines clean because the lint will destroy the plastic inside. This uh, moves against metal. So there's the metal piece that moves there against here. And then you can't, I can't show it to you in here, but there's a small, I've got my fingernail on it. There's a metal piece right here that this moves on and that pushes your feed dogs up. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna turn this over, okay? The feed dogs, they, whoops, sorry. They have been worn a fair amount. They're not real sharp uh, like they are when they're new. They've been dulled. I could replace them, but they don't really, really need to be replaced. Um, rather than that, well, I, what I can do is I can raise them up because they're just barely, barely coming through. And when they're sharp, that's what they should do. You don't really need to come through, but as they wear down, you have to lift them up. So I'm going to use this screw here and I'm going to lift it up. That nut is a stop screw to lock that down. All right, I'm cleaning this up right now, cleaning all the grease with uh, the lint and crap in it. Um, I'm using mineral spirits on a rag and that will break the grease up um, without harming the machine, the plastic or anything. Um, <clears throat> but when you're doing this, when you're cleaning and when you're taking care of your machine, you need to really pay attention. Um, I've kind of looked around here several times and I've missed this until I was just now cleaning it. And I'm gonna show you right here. Okay, so we have a pin that got in here and it's stuck in the grease. Uh, definitely want to get this out. It can, if it gets in the wrong place, it can definitely cause you a lot of problems. So as you are cleaning your machines, really pay attention and really inspect them. Make sure that you look real good. Um, is just make sure you really inspect it and look in and around and everything so that you get everything out that can cause you problems, all right? Okay, so I've cleaned this up uh, with mineral spirits real good, got all the nasty, dirty grease off out of it and uh, blown the lint and stuff out of it. Um, it's looking really, really good. Um, I have cleaned this up real good. I used denatured alcohol in here um, to clean up the dried oil. That dried oil is like a varnish and it gets really hard and can be tough to get out. Denatured alcohol will melt varnish very quickly. Um, if you're using, if, if you're working on older machines, like the older black machines with the nice pretty black finish be very careful because denatured alcohol will go right through that clear coat and it will destroy it in about three seconds so be very careful with that uh, so far as plastic it does fine on plastic 
just uh, if you're not sure, test in a small conspicuous spot and make sure. Leave it on, uh, leave it on a few minutes and uh, make sure everything's going to be all right. The only thing I found that it hurts is, is those uh, uh, clear coat finishes on most anything. So um, when I cleaned that out, I also found several uh, or a couple more pins. Okay, so this is another reason why you clean out your clean out uh, plastic cases and stuff. Make sure you get out everything out of there, the pins and everything else, because you don't, you don't want that getting back up in the machine. Here's the uh, lifter, and it is mostly dry. Um, I pressed on it a little bit. You can see a few fingerprints in it here. Um, <clears throat> it's been, I don't know, about 12 hours. So um, I'm, I will probably sand it down very carefully a little bit. I'm not going to install it yet because uh, that amount of pressure on it might cause some problems and um, uh, destroy what I've already done. And I don't want to do that. But it's uh, still fairly soft. So if I carefully sand it, it will make it easier to sand and just smooth it up because I want it somewhat smooth. And you can see right here on the end, I've got that kind of kicking up just a little bit. And I've got this a little bit higher. I want to sand that down a little bit, make it nice and level. And then this just needs to be clean, all right, smoother. Um, and then later this evening or later this afternoon, I'll check it and see what it feels like, see if it's hard enough. And if it is, I'll put it in and we'll see how it does. They do make a uh, quick dry type of um, JB Weld, um, and I used to use it a lot, but I quit. The quick dry will dry up quick, but it is nowhere near as strong as this. I've tried it several times. Um, there are some applications that it works fine. There's others that um, it won't. It, it just doesn't have enough strength to it, and it'll break. The... Uh, the JB Weld that takes 24 hours to set up, which is what I used, is much, much stronger. And I do I do mean much stronger. It's uh, not only harder, but it has more give to it. That stuff that sets up in 10 minutes um, is not as strong and it doesn't have as much give. In other words, it won't, it won't bend as much. Um, it breaks pretty quick. So... That's the reason that I didn't use it, and in most cases, I would recommend that most people not use it. Um, it's it's nice to have something that dries up quicker, but it just doesn't work as well. Okay, next we're going to check out the knife on this and make sure it looks good and make sure it's cleaned. Um, need to loosen the screw right here. Don't have to take it out, just loosen it, and then this will simply slide off. This is your knife assembly right here. Uh, your cutter, thread cutter. Let me turn this around. All right, this is your thread cutter right here. Make sure if you, your needle should be gone, but if you haven't taken it out, make sure it's up. And then you're gonna see if it will move, okay? It won't move. And uh, sometimes they move, sometimes they don't, depending on the machine. That's no big deal. So what you can do is this piece right here. This is responsible for moving your thread cutter. So you're gonna turn it. If I can, until this gets to that spot right there, okay? Then you're gonna push this down. Um, I'm gonna have to rearrange this phone. Okay, so you're gonna push this down. I don't think this is gonna do it, it might. Okay, so you see how that goes down? I want you to watch this and I want you to watch here. So I'm gonna turn it. Now, once you push it down, unless you go backwards, you don't have to hold it down. It will hold itself down until it goes all the way around, okay? See it went all the way out, 
and now it comes back and locks into place okay and then it's locked again and it won't move all right some of them will move some of them won't so um we're checking let me okay we're checking to make sure that this whole area is clean you can see there's a little bit of stuff there the actual cutter is back off over here it's this edge um the thread the thread cuts right around here okay so we're just making sure that it's clean um it's got a little bit of dirt on it and i'm gonna clean off, i'm gonna clean it off make sure it's cleaned off real good i'm gonna make sure that there's no thread no lint or anything under here um i will warn you to be very careful with this and if you want to take this apart you can but i warn you there are multiple parts in here and it can be kind of hard to get back together um and they don't sell these parts separately okay this is all one unit and it costs just about a hundred dollars okay so uh, depending on where you are and where you find it, it may be more than that. So that is a warning to you. Um, if you are thinking about taking it apart or something and just be extremely careful with this, it is somewhat delicate. Um, and if you put it back together wrong, it absolutely will not work. Trust me, I know. Um, so, but you do want to check this and make sure that there's no lint, no dust or whatever. And again, there's several parts here. So you can take something thin if there, if you have lint or something in there and push, uh, push that out. Um, I don't suggest using a screwdriver, um, but something like this little, uh, pry bar or spade will work well. You can see it'll go right under there. So if there's anything in there, you can push it out. Now, you notice it lifts up, right? So just doing this isn't going to hurt. But if you get crazy with it and start pulling and trying to turn it and everything else, you will bend this and mess it up. And if you bend this, it's not going to work right. And you'll end up replacing this because, like I said, they do not sell these parts separately. Okay? So you can go underneath the bottom. You can go underneath here. And there's actually a spacer in there. I actually know the spacers right here so this is there's no spacer here so uh, but there is the bottom so if you got anything in there you can clean that out but uh, take note that this goes over the top of it all right so just be very careful very gentle and there's three or four pieces in here as well so if you've got a notion to take this apart be very careful make sure uh, make sure you document it um, pay close attention so that you can put it right back. I highly suggest video or pictures either way to make sure if you decide to take any of this apart and be very, very careful. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to lubricate this. This is a little oil wick in the center of this. I'll put a couple drops in there. I will move this again and I'll put some oil on this track. Um, I'm going to lubricate the needle bar on top right here where it goes through the frame and down on the bottom it goes through the frame i'll lubricate it there um, notice right here where the needle bar connects to the uh, take up lever assembly okay this piece right here <clears throat> that moves let me see if i can move it for you so you can see it it moves when it zigzags make sure you get a couple of drops of oil in there and genomes um, in fact, actually, if you notice right here, right here, this, there's some felt behind this uh, piece of metal. And up here at top, usually in two places, top and bottom, but maybe, yeah, there's a small one. There's a hole where you can oil that felt and you can kind of see the felt on the sides of it too. So you can lubricate that, um, and I'm going to lubricate every every joint. This is a hard every joint on the front and back of each joint, 
uh, make sure that I've got lubricated well. I'm going to clean that out a little bit more. I haven't got it as clean as I want it. I haven't spent much time on the top yet. You can see some gunk in there. Uh, so I'm going to clean that out a little bit better, and then I'm going to lubricate everything there. I will also lubricate the, uh, the presser foot bar, so you can see that um, right through here. So you've got the top and the bottom. Um, this is going to be the top right here. Can't really see it real well. I'll drop some oil down here, and then I'm going to get some oil right down in here. Whoop right in here okay get some oil on it down in there make sure that's lubricated just a couple of drops um, on both um, and stuff so if you have any questions let me know I mean if you have any questions let me know put it in the comments I'll get back to you and if you're liking the video and liking the videos I put out then please uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel Okay, so I've cleaned it up some more, and I'll show you here. Here's the needle bar, uh, not the needle bar, but the take-up lever bar. Put a little bit of oil there, and then I'm going to drop a little bit of oil down in here. Two or three drops, maybe a little bit more. Um, I always put some on the spring. I uh, put a fair amount on the spring just to make sure that uh, it goes smooth. Okay. Um, this is the automatic threader, I forgot to tell you, but I put a little bit on there. And any spring, most any spring, I'll put a little bit on it. And then I'll put oil down at the bottom, just like that. And then I'm going to <clears throat> make sure that this is all the way up. And I'm gonna move it. Make sure that it operates real good. Okay, make sure it's not sticking. If it sticks, then I'll continue to put oil on it. You can see it's kind of a little bit dirty there, not too bad. Um, not bad at all. I'll clean it off and put a little bit more oil on it just to make sure. Um, I want to get some oil on the needle bar. So I'm going to put it right down there, several drops there. And we'll get some oil right here. Okay, I'm going to turn it. Make sure everything looks good. Okay. And then, like I told you, I'm going to put some oil up here on this linkage where it uh, goes to the goes from the needle bar to the take-up lever linkage. Okay. And I'm also going to put it right here. I forgot to tell you that this is this is the pivot point then you need to have some right there all right now over here on this take up lever linkage you can see that little hole back in there i'm going to get some let me hang on see if i can get some better light maybe get a better shot of it okay see that little hole in the top i'm going to put this right there put some oil there Get it in there, and I'm going to get it on each side, okay? It's hard to see what I'm doing, I'm sorry. And I'm going to go further back in there, get some oil on all of that. Every, every piece, every pivot point back there that moves, it's going to get a couple of drops of oil. Um, all machines have a pivot point right here on the back side, and this is for the actual take-up lever itself. Get a little bit of oil on that. And then, of course, we're going to turn it. Like so. Okay, now, I didn't get oil here yet. So, I'm going to get some here on the actual take-up lever where it's going up and down. If I can get it to come out. There we go. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I got everything good real quick. When you're when you're doing this, you're not, as long as you're using a high quality oil, a sewing machine oil, or like I use TriFlow or whatever, um, you're not going to get too much oil on it. I know some people say you will, you will not. Worst case scenario, you're going to get enough on there that it will get onto whatever you're sewing. So you might 
wait for 24 hours. If you get a good bit of oil on there, you might wait for 24 hours before you sew and then make sure that you sew on a piece of uh, something that's not, uh, that you don't need, a piece of scrap. I'll get it out. So if you're wondering what I'm doing right now, I'm getting it on that felt, okay? I'm getting the oil into that felt just to make sure because that felt will continue to lubricate it. And I'm actually, you can see it dripping back there. I'm cleaning some, I'm cleaning that felt out some, okay? And then I'm gonna clean that oil out of there before I put this back together because I don't want it dripping everywhere. So, um, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do up top here in just a minute. All right, so going to, uh, on all machines, you want to oil the bushings where <clears throat> where the shafts go through the uh, through the housing. So and usually you got two on top and two on bottom. So here's one of the bushings right here where the, the top shaft goes through there, and then right here. Okay, you can see that little groove right there. Uh, sometimes they'll have felts over here on the sides. If there's felt, any felts that you see need to be lubricated well. So get that. Now I'm going to turn it. And maybe just for good measure, get a little bit more. Okay, if you get a lot of nasty crap coming out, you're going to continue to do this till the nasty crap quits coming out. Uh, most of the time you won't. About the only time that you'll get that is if uh, the machine is starting to, uh, the oil and stuff starting to, to dry up and uh, the machine's hard to turn. Now we'll put a little lubrication right here on this gear and right back here, just like that. I got a little bit too much there. I'm gonna soak some of it up, okay? Don't need a whole lot. About all there's some grease on there so that oil will uh, help to rejuvenate that grease um, small stuff like this you don't necessarily have to I always put a drop or two on it not too much no need to put too much on it there's a joint that moves right here I'm gonna put a little bit of lubrication there um, right here is that top part on the back I'll put a little more oil on that. This is where the take-up lever is. Make sure that you get plenty up there on that. Okay. That's like the base point of the take-up lever. Okay. And, uh, you know, anything that moves, anything that has movement to it like this, you can put a drop or two. You don't need to really put a ton on it. Just a, just a small amount. Just a little bit to make sure everything keeps moving. Okay. I got a little bit more than I intended there. If that happens, you just wipe it off. No big deal. Okay. Make sure that uh, if your machine, and this one doesn't, <clears throat> uh, some machines, this piece right here moves back and forth for the bobbin winder to kick the machine out. Make sure that it's lubricated. This one doesn't have it, so you don't have to worry about it. Now we're going to uh, move on down to the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to grease and lubricate everything down here. <clears throat> um, there's three main felts. There's one right here, there's one right here, and there's one over here on this other end. Um, right here, I'm gonna lubricate those real well with oil. Um, sometimes if they look really dirty, I'll I'll uh, drench them in oil and then I'll squeeze them out with a rag and stuff uh, just while they're on there, trying to clean some of the crap out of it, some of the dirty crap out of it, um, to clean them up some because the dirt and stuff really needs to come out if you can get it out. Um, now, this is the piece on this machine that um, uh, actuates your thread cutter. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got lubrication in there because it's got a little rod that that little rod shoots down in here and then this turns around pushes it around so I definitely want to make sure that it's got lubrication I don't want it getting tore up so make sure that's 
fairly well lubricated. This is going to have more grease on it than anything else. Any of the rest of the stuff that I grease. Okay. You notice I'm fairly liberal with it. I'm not I'm going to just pack it in there, but I want to make sure that I definitely have enough. Uh, I'll pack, kind of pack it into a couple of spots a little bit. Just to make sure that uh, there's plenty of grease. I don't want it all over the outside like I'm getting it, so I'm going to clean that up before I'm done. Okay, but I think that'll work. Will definitely work right there now clean the outside of it, outside of it up because I don't need it all over the outside and as this thing starts turning um, all the grease I got in there is gonna come out all right <coughs> now I'm going to right here where the feed dog lift is. I'm gonna get some grease on here. I don't need an extreme amount on here. Just a little bit. I'm just gonna put a little grease on there and turn this around. As you see that I'm doing it, it doesn't have to be an extreme amount of grease. Okay, I'm gonna get this, get the other side because it's got two spots where it uh, pushes. So make sure that I get grease in there. Okay, then I want to get the gear. And again, it doesn't have to be an extreme amount. Um, just needs to be greasy. Okay, a little bit of greasy. The more grease that you put on here, oops, that's way too much. The more grease you put on this, the more likely you are to get a ton of lint stuck in here. And uh, that you're not wanting to do. Now I'm continuing to hold this. I don't have any more grease on it, but the grease that's on there, it'll continue to push it around, okay? Now anything that's got a lobe like this, gets a little bit of grease. Okay, most of these lobes have to do with your uh, feed system, um, depending on what stitch you're using, okay? So, make sure that you get, again, it doesn't have to be an extreme amount, but and I don't recommend an extreme amount, but just enough to make sure that it's got some grease on it because uh, that will help protect it from being destroyed from the lint, okay? Too much grease will attract a ton of lint, which will, in turn, cause you problems. <coughs> so, as you can see, I don't have a ton in there. Now, I am going to put a little bit of grease right up here. This is, let me see if I can, it's going to be right up here. Let me see if I can turn that. Okay, this, uh, this piece is what determines the length of your stitch, how long your stitch is, okay? So, it's got a little piece that moves back and forth in there and I wanna get some grease in there. And it doesn't have to be an extreme amount, but it's got like three sides. Um, can't really show it to you, but you can look on your machine and see it. It moves up and down in there. Okay, a little square, moves through a little track. Uh, just make sure it's greased well. Okay, and uh, then anything that, you know, had pivots or uh, turns or whatever, you want just a little bit of oil in it. So like this, this pivots, okay. You want a little bit of lubrication on each end of that okay so i'm gonna put a couple of drops here and a couple of drops here 
it won't ha hurt to have a drop here drop or two there that's just going to make sure that that stays lubricated now <clears throat> this piece moves right i want to make sure that that shaft is lubricated so that this doesn't get stuck if this gets stuck it's going to be a problem so i'm going to put it on one side and move it back and forth now i'm going to get it on the other side okay move it back and forth this is oil so the excess is going to drain off it's not like the grease that will just uh continue to uh attract more lint <clears throat> and then there's a couple of pivot points up here for the feed dogs i'm going to get those you can get them from top or the bottom either way any any small pivot points it doesn't hurt you got some gears and stuff um like here this gear it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of oil it doesn't necessarily need grease you can put grease on it if you want um doesn't really need it just a little bit of just a tiny tiny bit of lubrication is all it needs okay and again your pivot points this is for uh this is for your uh knee lever for lifting your lifting your presser foot with your knee okay i want to make sure that's got a little bit of lubrication on it all right if you have any questions or anything let me know um there's no sense in drenching any of this real hard it's not not really going to hurt it but you're just going to waste it and you don't and you don't need it you don't need a stream amount on there uh, the main things to get are the felts where the joints are. And I already got those. I'll put a little bit more. Okay, the three of them. So, if you have any questions, let me know. All right. <clears throat> so, I got the uh, pressure foot lifter repaired. And it's set up. And as you can see, it's holding well. There it is. Doing great. Now I can put it back together. So you can buy a new one. Um, you can get them on, on online. Uh, but this is, uh, ladies kind of in a hurry for this and don't really have time to wait. So this is a repair that I made and it works. Finish putting this back together and we'll check out the machine. I'm putting it back together and you get to the top, make sure to plug your bobbin winder back in or obviously it won't work. When you're putting the top on you get to here and this won't go down you can't figure out why. Do not force it, don't get crazy, you'll break it. It won't go down because this is not aligning. Turn it backwards as if you're bringing it up. Okay, normally uh, you can turn it forward too, but using one hand, it works better going backwards. And, well, make sure you got it all lined up. Like it goes, and there you go. Okay, so uh, maybe on your machine, you've got some gunk on there, kind of like this from tape or two side sticky tape or whatever. You can't get it off very easily without scraping it. Um, don't get something out and start scraping your machine up, <clears throat> okay? Again, denatured alcohol, a little bit on a rag, be careful, don't get too much on there, pours quickly, and it'll normally come off pretty quickly. If it doesn't, let it sit there for a minute. Okay, that cuts right through it. Normally it will just cut right through it. And uh, see right here, got some crap here. That's even a piece of tape on there. <coughs> okay. The tape, I'll use my fingernail after I go over a little bit. 
it'll start loosening it. If it's an actual piece of tape, it'll take a little bit longer, a little bit more work, but uh, it'll take it off. You can actually take a, take a rag and wet it and just sit it on there and leave it on the tape for about 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, and it'll go right through it, okay? So that's better than digging the paint up on your machine, trying to get the stuff off of it. All right, I've got it all put back together, got the feed dogs adjusted, got everything uh, set up, got it threaded and ready to go. And I've actually done, uh, one, one of the problems that this was having is she said that it wouldn't uh, go backwards when doing the, um, on the buttonholer that the thread just wadded up. So I've got that set. I've got it set on about three. Um, got my uh, presser foot tension on one. And I don't have a thick fabric under here. It's a couple of layers. And you see, I got a button back here, and here we go. Let's see. I've done a couple, and it's done fine. Done a very, very nice job. So let's uh, cut the thread, lift the foot that now works, pull this out. And you see, I've got three others I've already done. Look at that. Looking good. I think the button holder is working. Alrighty, now on to uh, check some thicker fabric. All right, so the buttonholer done good. Um, it was skipping stitches and the stitch links were changing and stuff. So uh, let's see, see how this does. I got, uh, ooh, that was hard to go through. I got several layers here because this is a quilting machine and she does quilting. So we're gonna see, I wanna, I'm going to cut this excess off. I need to change that stitch too. I still got on a quilter. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Here goes. Pretty hard. See what it's uh, what we're doing for sewing. Well, it's actually looking pretty good. It's making a smaller stitch right there. It's pulling it tight. The stitch itself looks good for what it is. I'm gonna change the needle, see if I can get a, get a little better, uh, get to work a little better, and, uh, not so loud, and uh, see what we can get for a longer stitch. Okay, I changed the needle. I wanted to put a 16 in it, but I don't have one, so we got a 19. We're gonna increase the stitch length. Okay, here we go, see what it'll do. Definitely hitting hard and, oh, I'm getting caught. I 
forgot to put my thing up for the buttonholer. Yeah, that thing's definitely hitting hard. Looks good. Stitch itself looks good. I'm gonna take it down to a 12 and have to be real careful and see how it sounds. All right, we're gonna test and see how it does. We got a 12 in it. See if it's gonna do it or not. Well, it's definitely making the fabric curl because I've got it pretty tight, actually. Um, but the stitching is looking good. It's not changing stitches. It's not skipping. Overall, it's doing well. So, um, I think it's fixed. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. If you'd like a user's manual, service manual, and parts manual, then click the link in the upper right hand corner or I'll have it down in the description below as well. Click that and you can get all three of those manuals. Again, thank you. If you have any questions, put them down below and I'll see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.